welcome. I'd like to welcome you all to this very special broadcast from the 2014 encampment of the new message from God. My name is Reed Summers. Patricia Summers. And it's a privilege to have you here with us and with the over 100 members of the worldwide community from 17 countries who have traveled to this high mountain environment close to the home of the new message from God in Colorado in the United States to convene with Marshall Vion Summers, the messenger for our time. Today we are gathering to receive directly from his hand in this high mountain environment a new revelation given for this moment and for you, the people, a revelation entitled God's I'm sorry, the worldwide community of God's new message. We stand at a time of great challenge and travail in the world, and a time when a great gift has entered the world. This gift is called the new message from God, and we are the first recipients of it. Mysteriously and miraculously and remarkably, you who are here gathered at the encampment and you who are with us this morning for some reason, and across distance and time and great mystery, have come to be the first to receive this revelation and to have a messenger, I'm sorry, to have a relationship with the messenger, Marshall Vion Summers. To have a relationship with the living messenger. I think this is a greater miracle than we now know. And yet we are called to have a relationship not just with the message and the messenger but with each other. Because the time has come for the source to speak and to call us together as the early community that we are. And the time has come for the worldwide community to be consecrated and brought into being more fully around the globe. And the reasons for this are pressing as the condition of the world deteriorates, and this gift from God, this truly saving message, stands at the threshold of being recognized and received or unrecognized and unreceived at the time of greatest need. The mission of the new message is to reach humanity in time, to awaken the sleeping brilliance that the new message calls knowledge that lives within each person and through each person, and through people in action, to truly save the world. Nothing less. This is the mission of the new message. And without the worldwide community of the new message, it would not be possible. And so you are the extension of that great river of intention from far beyond this world and this time that brought this man into the world this angel from the assembly that gave to him a message prepared across vast time beyond this life that called the allies of humanity to, to, to speak and to open their hand in a gesture of relationship that brought greater community knowledge and wisdom into the world. This is this vast river of intention that flows into this very moment and now flows to you. And now you have the opportunity to make this your intention to make the new message from God your charge, to be a vehicle for it in the world, to speak it into the world, to extend it, to bring people to it. And so you now are joining that great river of intention and the source itself. This is a gift. This is a miracle. This is redemption. This is the most pure and authentic form of return to God that I could ever imagine for myself. To be living at the time of the messenger, to receive the new message given weeks ago for this moment and for you, and to take it forward. So I honor you for making this rendezvous. You have made it. And it is a miracle. And all who are gathered here 
who have made the long journey to be here in this moment. I honor you. So Patricia will now take us into the revelation and the circumstances of its reception. I'll just say that those closest to the messenger have for some time been laboring with the question of what will this take? Or what will it take to establish the new message here in this world? And um, it's been a concern and a consideration in our mind. and. I believe that because of these exchanges between us and our attempts to, to see what lies ahead, um, this is an answer uh, to our need and helps to confirm and clarify um, what it is that we have been foreseeing, which is the need for a platform in the world. Because there are other environments that support this process of revelation that exists beyond this place. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be an environment within this world that supports the existence, the arrival, okay, the preparation and the transmission of this new message revelation here in the world. And so, um, Though we did not know that this revelation would be given in this time, and even to, to have it available to offer today to you all around the world, it came. It came. And so uh, before we have the opportunity to hear the voice of revelation speaking to us about the worldwide community of God's new message, will hear the messenger in the first moments following having received this revelation with his first thoughts and impressions. And we have that available to share with you. So imagine yourself standing perhaps right at the doorway of the cave, let's say, of Revelation, um, in the first few moments after Revelation had occurred, for perhaps the thousandth time, in other words, thousands of times, in one form or another, either in formal Revelation or in response to the messenger's true need, he engaged in an exchange and a communication with the source so these revelations, imagine, are just a part of his communication with those who sent him here. So, let's see if we can hear this now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was awoken again at 6 o'clock in the morning. I lay in bed for a long time. Then I got up slowly, and as I did so, the presence began to grow. And I checked immediately to see if I was being called. And I felt the affirmation all the way through my mind and body. I let the presence grow called my wife, Patricia, and my son, Reed, to be with me today to receive this important teaching about the worldwide community of the new message from God. I want you to know this community is so precious to me, so important to me. It is a great family, a family called from many parts of the world, from many cultures, from many nations, from many religions. 
young, middle-aged, older, many circumstances, called by one calling, a sacred calling from the source of all life. And I must sound this calling as part of my role and responsibility as the messenger. I must call certain people to me. They cannot elect themselves. I must call them. I must know they are ready, and they are coming here with the right understanding and the right purpose and the right relationship with me and with those I have assigned to carry forth the protection and the presentation of God's new message in the world. Community is a challenging thing. It means different things to different people. People use community for shelter. People use community to build power. People use community to escape from life. People use community to oppose other people and other communities. But that is not what is being called for here. And that is why there must be much clarification regarding what the worldwide community is. And I'm so grateful that the Assembly has given this teaching to serve that purpose. And I know that I must serve that purpose and others must serve that purpose to make sure that we are all clear to keep this on course with where it needs to go so that it may reach those it must reach. In so doing, begin to alter the course and the destiny of the world. This is my blessing. This is my prayer. This is what is so special to me, so important for everything that I have had to go through and endure to bring this great gift from heaven to you and to others through you. Therefore, take time to understand these things, to receive this revelation, and to know that heaven watches to see who can respond. For so much depends upon this. Take a brief moment to be with this calling from the messenger and the consequence of this rendezvous. This moment honor that if you have been called, you have been called. If the messenger is calling to you, Receive this calling. Have the courage to receive this. Now let us receive from him this new revelation entitled God's, the worldwide community of God's new message.
Today we should speak of the worldwide community of God's new message. Clearly there must be a great community of respondents and they must be very connected to the messenger and to those who assist him. For the revelation comes through him. He is the vehicle of revelation. And those he has chosen to assist him closely, who have proven themselves over time, they must be honored. And whoever can respond must associate with him. This is not something that you can take upon yourself to present or to teach or to express, but that is hazardous. It is out of keeping with the purpose and the meaning of the revelation. It is your relationship with the messenger and with his sacred community that will be your anchor in this world. It will be the center of the wheel. It will be the lighthouse upon the stormy seas. The errors of the past are so grievous and long-standing regarding these things because people did not stay with the original community. It did not stay with the messenger and those whom he has appointed. There are many people in the world who will take the revelation and try to turn it into a business of some kind or a platform for their own self-proclamation. They will unite it with other things and it will become corrupted. They will choose perhaps only parts of it that they identify with and neglect the rest. This always happens following a time of revelation. And that is why those who are amongst the first to respond and those who will respond beyond this must unite themselves with the messenger in his sacred circle. In this way, the message remains pure and uncorrupted. It is not used for selfish purposes or for political purposes or in some kind of attempt to unite it with other religions. But that would be a betrayal, you see. The only authentic worldwide community, then, would be in concentric circles around the messenger and those who carry the message with him. Anything beyond this, apart from this, cannot be held to be pure and authentic. The angelic assembly has taken great pains to make sure and try to minimize the errors of the past to make sure that the message remains pure and efficacious. That is why the pathway has been given. That is why the words have been given. That is why the books have been given and the recordings have been given. And even the voice of revelation which has never been presented before. So that this does not become corrupted and diffracted and stolen and misused. This is the will of heaven, you see. But the earth is a corrupted environment. People living in separation seek to use all things to support their separation. 
to enrich themselves, either materially or spiritually, to support their group, whomever they identify with. God's new message is for the whole world. It is not for one group, one nation, or one tribe alone. And it is connected with the messenger, you see. It is connected to those who assist him closely. Therefore, he must be the focal point within his remaining years on earth and beyond this as well. To be true to God's great gift. To be true to those of us who have sent it. To be true to the intent and purpose of the revelation, which is greater than anyone can fully understand. The ambitious, the self-seeking, the self-serving is always a hazard when a pure revelation is being given into the world. It is enough, you see. People do not need to embellish it. People do not need to add on to it or alter it in any way. For this weakens it and destroys its power, confuses its meaning, and corrupts its message. When we speak of a worldwide community, then, we are speaking of those who are united with the messenger and his sacred community. It is not merely the message they must receive. It is the messenger and those who will carry on his work beyond his life. They are all one. You cannot really have one without the other and really be able to receive the blessings and the great power that God is bestowing upon you and through you and others upon the whole world. Do not think you can do a better plan for presenting this to the world. Do not play the Judas role. Do not betray the messenger. A community must have a center. It must have a purpose. It must have a unifying purpose. And it must be stronger than the will of intent of any person. It must have the power of heaven within it to be true and to be lasting and to carry itself forward into a world that will be ever more chaotic within the great ways of change. To be part of this community is to give your mind and heart to this, to the messenger, the message, and those who will carry on his message with his blessings and approval. Already plans are being laid to safeguard the revelation beyond his life. He has given the power and responsibility of this to the society that has joined around him, has pledged and proven themselves around him. This must be respected as the center and the source of the revelation. But be very clear Beyond the messenger's life, there will be nothing added to the revelation. The seal of the prophets will close behind him, and heaven will have nothing more to say. It will be up to the fidelity and the wisdom and the union of people to carry this forward in the tradition in which it was given directed by the community that has supported it all these many years. In this way, the message remains pure in a world that is so impure. It remains uncorrupted in a world that is corrupted. Those who hold it in its pure form will be the antidote to those who steal it and try to do things with it for their own purposes 
and to their own end. Never think that you know what to do with the revelation on your own. That will only create calamity, misunderstanding, and will endanger the messenger and those who will carry on his work with his blessings and approval. Never think that you know where to take it without the guidance of this community. Do not try to take it to the leaders of nations and religion where they will either deny it or attempt to use it for their own end. They who have committed themselves to their own trajectory in life may be the least able to respond to a greater calling from beyond. Do not call yourself a teacher of the new revelation unless you have been appointed that rule by the society who has gathered around the messenger and who carries on his work with his approval and with his authority. This is a great responsibility and it will require restraint for certain people. The Angelic Assembly has taken great care to present this gradually over time building its foundation, building its core community, calling those who are destined to be a part of it to come and to build a new life around it. Not all of them have been able to succeed in this, but that has been their calling and is their calling, and it will be the calling for others as well. Never think the revelation is merely here for your own personal edification, merely to enhance your life, to give you peace or pleasure. It is really to call you into a greater service, you see. For why would God call you? Only to have you continue to be adrift in a world of fantasy, terror and denial. You are being freed for a purpose. This is the purpose. If you are truly being called, then you are being called into service. And it is through this service, within this service, that your greater relationships will emerge. And your true redemption will take place as you proceed. Blessed you are to be given such great task and responsibility. Perhaps at this moment you cannot see what an immense gift this is to you in your life and what it will mean for others who will learn through you and will benefit from the great service that you will give to this. Words cannot express how important this is, what it will mean for your life. In your heart you will know these things. Your mind may reject, or deny, or resist, but there are still many things you want for yourself, which may or may not be appropriate for you. But if you are truly honest, then you have to take the steps to knowledge and to prepare yourself for a greater service and involvement in the world. All along, this is what we have meant when we speak of a higher purpose. It's been called into a new kind of life, guided by greater power in service to greater power the powers that have sent you into the world for this purpose. But all great truths have hazards because they can be misinterpreted 
misapplied and misused, or wedded with other things of little or no value. So great care must be brought here. That is why your preparation in taking the steps to knowledge is so vital to give you the strength, the self-awareness, the clarity to begin to discern what is true from what is untrue within your own mind and circumstances. God has given you this power. God has given you the eyes to see and the ears to hear. But your eyes and your ears have been used for other purposes for a very long time. So you must be prepared to fulfill a greater purpose in the world. And it is through this community this purpose will emerge. But alone you cannot do it. Isolated you cannot do it. And though all not being called to one place, for God wants you all over the world, it is this divine connection that you are so privileged to be a part of and to be called to and to serve and to be blessed by. To understand what we are saying to you today, you must have a very clear understanding of what community means. It is a community of service. It is a community of studenthood. It is a community of strength, clarification, restoration and renewal. It is a community above and beyond all else that must help bring God's new revelation into the world. But the time is short and the great ways of change are building. And with each passing day, those from the universe around you are gaining strength in the minds and hearts of people. There is no time to delay now. You have delayed long enough. There is no time to be ambivalent. You have been ambivalent your whole life. There is no time to wrestle with yourself endlessly. For the truth is with you. You do not need to do grand and spectacular things. For the service required is very simple. What is important is that you can maintain it and carry it forward. And be true to it. So that it can rest upon you. Let the society determine what must be done. Follow this. Be a part of this. That is the center of this sacred community. Do not build other communities. Do not break away and try to be the center of community. For that is not your destiny. There are so many hazards at the early stages of bringing something of this magnitude into a divided and corrupted world. There are so many hazards. It is a delicate situation and success is not a shot. It depends on who responds and what they're able to give. Their understanding and their commitment. It is extremely hazardous for the messenger now, as he begins to proclaim to the world, as the proclamation is being prepared and is now prepared. Who will stand with him? Who will have the courage and the humility to do this? Everyone will be tested, of course. But it's just the nature of the situation.
if you love humanity, if you love this world, if you love freedom, if you love inspiration, then this is the mountain you must climb. And this is not the mountain you will climb alone. All things that are impure within you, all things that are troubled or divisive within you, will be shed along the way. For you cannot go in two directions at once. And the worldwide community has so much to do, it will pull everyone forward. That does not mean that you can escape your own self-development, for that is one of your pillars of strength. But it does mean that you are assuming greater responsibility. In the spirit of service and humility. This is how heaven restores those who can respond. This is how heaven blesses the world for this time and positions humanity correctly for the times to come. Humanity in the future are facing hazards that you cannot see and cannot even know. What happens today will determine what happens a hundred and a thousand years from now. Those who play a part in such a great service will be blessed by heaven and honored. Many of the voices in the world speaking of truth, but there is only one messenger. Religions claim to have the only path to God, but God created them all, and they have all been changed over time by man. Many will denounce the messenger as a heretic, as a devil, as an imposter, but they cannot see and cannot know. They are bound to what they have created, they are bound to their ideas, they are bound to their fixations. Even if their own prophet or messiah were to appear, they would crucify him. thinking that they were imposters. Heaven understands these things. Humanity is confused. Living in separation, you cannot know what heaven knows, or see fully what heaven sees. But you can respond and carry on a great mission here on earth. And you are blessed to be called to this. Blessed beyond all things, that could support you and serve you, both now and into the future. The messenger is a humble man, but he is an older man, and his health is not that strong. He must rely upon others of true faith and commitment to assist him, for this is a mission far too great for one person will require the participation of many, many people. Even at this moment, there are millions waiting to receive God's new revelation. How will you find them? How will you reach them in time? How will you give them the gift that can liberate their minds and their hearts and provide a pathway out of the jungle of their circumstances? This is the work, not of you alone, but of you united with the messenger, under his guidance and the guidance of heaven to him. This is the blessing upon you. This is the great promise for humanity. Very good. Let's take a moment to be with this revelation. 
be with what you've heard. It will be up to the fidelity, the wisdom, and the union of people to carry this forward in the tradition in which it was given, directed by the community that has supported it all these many years. When we speak of a higher purpose, it is being called into a new kind of life guided by greater powers and service to greater powers, the powers that have sent you into the world for this purpose. Why would God call you only to have you continue to be adrift in a world of fantasy, terror, and denial? You are being freed for a purpose. This is the purpose. If you are truly being called, then you are being called into service. And it is through this service, within this service, that your greater relationships will emerge and your true redemption will take place as you proceed. There are so many at the early stages of bringing something of this magnitude into a divided and corrupted world. There are so many hazards. It is a delicate situation, and success is not assured. It depends on who responds, what they were able to give, their understanding and their commitment. The only authentic worldwide community then would be in concentric circles around the messenger and those who carry the message with him. Anything beyond this, apart from this, cannot be held to be pure and authentic. If you love humanity, if you love this world, if you love freedom, if you love inspiration, then this is the mountain you must climb. And this is not a mountain you will climb alone. Good. So take a moment within your experience. Honor the fact that you have come and that others are coming and that a worldwide community is coming into being. And at the heart of it is a messenger named Marshall Vion Summers. He is with us today. And we have the privilege of spending time with him now. Good. So take a moment and. And actually mark this moment, if you would, in your life. Um, as Marshall Vian is about to confer upon us this revelation and to bless us as he does that.
We're living at a time of revelation where God has spoken again. Not since the times of Muhammad has this taken place. It is a time in which many people are called into the world to be a part of this. It is a time where people's lives will be quickened and changed in preparation. It is a time when many people will feel a mysterious thread, like a gravity, pulling them in a certain direction. Perhaps even pulling them out of situations they have established for themselves. It is entirely mysterious. I cannot explain it for you. Heaven knows who it seeks in the world to respond to this, to be amongst the first respondents. And it seeks to bring them to the revelation. But it also seeks to bring them to one another. For it will be of no benefit if large numbers of people have a private relationship with me or even with the revelation. For what will come of that? For this is not merely, as the teaching has just said, for your personal enrichment, whether it be material or spiritual, It is to call you into a greater service. Part of you wants that. And part of you is perhaps afraid. Part of you yearns for that. And part of you is still very invested in other things. of you knows that what the world emphasizes is not true. And part of you somehow still believes it or hopes it to be true. So my purpose is to build true relationship because the revelation must rest upon pure relationship. And by pure, I mean generated by the deeper power that God has placed within all of you. With your divergent personalities, your idiosyncrasies, your unique problems, your limitations. Knowledge is like a great equalizer to bring people's talents forward or minimizing their handicaps. Part of the essence of the new revelation is relationships of higher purpose. That doesn't mean lofty romance, or romancing the angels, or romancing the divine, or romancing one another, or romancing the earth. It is really coming into a deeper association. And what truly unites people and community is purpose. But now this is a purpose from heaven. It's not a human invention. It has the power of heaven in it. It has the will of heaven in it. It is calling people to be in a sacred union with each other. Not only for the personal benefits that that will bestow, but upon meeting a far greater need in the world. For heaven knows that humanity stands at the precipice of calamity. 
it is vulnerable to a universe full of intelligent life. And it's undermining its foundation here on Earth. Many of you know this, but do not know how to respond. And no one knows how to respond fully to these things. And that is why God has spoken again to rescue humanity from a dilemma which it cannot alone resolve. Do it based upon the union of people, the devotion of people, the resonance of people with God's new word for the world. A word that is not only to bring people into one community, but to influence all the communities of the world. So the people of all faith traditions can learn of the greater community and can prepare for a world in decline. My intention is not only to unite this sacred community, but to affect everyone else, to plant the seeds of awareness, and to tell them that there is no hell and damnation, and that they too carry knowledge within them, and that heaven has a purpose for them, regardless of their circumstances, regardless of all that has happened to them. It is a sacred community who will help carry the revelation forward, because I cannot do it. I'll be a mere footnote in history, perhaps, without that. And those of you who have a destiny here cannot find your purpose without me and without this. It's a freedom that has no choice. Well, maybe it has a choice, but it's not a very good choice. So the emphasis from the source on this community is very strong. And I hold this community to be precious, and those who are in it are precious to me, and those who will be in it are precious to me. And when I am no longer here, I will be charged with overseeing this, though I may ha be unable to influence it directly. In your heart, you will know this is true. The mind is confused because it has been so contaminated by the world and by the process of separation. The Lord of the universe is just very smart. God does not have to manage you and your chaotic affairs and the haphazard nature of life here on earth. God has just put the calling within you. Sooner or later, in this life or another, it will emerge and begin to turn you towards heaven. This is such a time for those who can respond. And I call to you to respond. And I call to those whom you will speak to to respond. And I call to you regardless of your circumstances. I call you to come out of self-degradation and self-repudiation for you know not your value in the light of these things. Even to respond means you must trust yourself. You must value yourself. You must see that your errors are not who you really are. And that as a child does not know any better, you did not know any better. And as you proceed 
that strength of knowing will become stronger, making it more difficult for you to make a mistake. What a magnificent gift. This is my calling, and I will call forth as far as I can, and I will call through you as far as we can. If there are millions waiting to hear this, then nothing else will satisfy them or give them comfort or inspiration. Live for this, and you will be uplifted. May the presence of the teachers be with us. hear what the messenger just said to you. I call you to respond. I call you. I call to those who you've reached. I call you. This is my calling. And uh, hopefully in the days ahead, we will all have an opportunity to spend more time with this revelation, which is the worldwide community of God's new message. And we hope to have this available to you very soon at the home of the new message online. So look for this revelation there among the many other revelations that have come with it to help us help the world. Thank you for joining us. Let's take a moment to realize that we are an emerging, young, worldwide community of the new message. We reside all over the world. Somehow, some way we found this man and this message. There is mystery there, and there is certainty there, and there is destiny there, conferred upon us, those who sent us. So may the presence of the angelic assembly surround us in the days in the years, in the decades, and the centuries to come. Nasi Novara Karam. Nasi